Hello, this is Alex from cables.gl. I'd like to show you combined textures operator. And you might have missed it, but it's actually really useful. And uh, you can use it for creative stuff. Like I would say in this example, it's used in a very interesting um, kind of graphical design way without getting into image compose um, texture stacking and all that stuff that we're kind of used to. It's just on the fly, put in some textures, uh, do some magical stuff inside it, and then it gets assigned to a basic material and then to the rectangle. And then if I put down uh, Orbit, I can see that my uh, rectangle it has some stuff removed from it. So it's actually, um, yeah, I got like a logo with a, with a transparency and, and doesn't look like a rectangle anymore. Anyway, what am I talking about? So... Combined textures operator. We can take a look at this example and then I will show you um, what I feel like is a fantastic use case for it, for actually two use cases for it. Um, for uh, our PBR materials in cables that you use um, ARM or AORM um, RGB texture files to control the uh, ambient occlusion and the reflection metalness and then also another um, trick for um, if you're into 3d modeling and you're working with uh, direct x direct x uh, um, normal maps and open gl maps i think you might know what i'm going to get into um, we do a special little trick with the combined textures operator and we don't have to go into photoshop and do any of that stuff we just do it live in cables. Okay, so let's quickly run through the parameters and then we'll get into those funky use cases. All right, so first we see the filter modes, which we're used to. We can also find them in the texture operators and that just controls how our texture is filtered once we do some manipulation here. Uh, then we have the wrap modes, so we can also clamp it, uh, mirror it, um, you might need to, you might not. You can just leave these at default, usually. Um, and then the interesting stuff happens. This is all the ports uh, that we see exposed here. They have parameters per color channel. So the first one is called R for red, then green, blue, and then the alpha channel. And in the case of this uh, example, the alpha channel is this logo and if i might impress you with the vis texture you can resize it have you seen this that's pretty cool so we have this black and white texture that is telling our combined textures operator that hey the alpha uh use that uh texture for it and assign it to this new generated texture so if we look at the vis texture that's coming out of this combined textures operator then we see the alpha was applied here and if we remove you see, it's it's the whole entire uh, rectangle is covered by our beach textures um, texture. So, okay, then what can we do? What are these options here? Um, the first thing says R source. So for the red channel R, we can select the source of the incoming texture. So in this beach texture, we want to use the red channel of this texture and then assign it to the red channel of our output texture right in in this case you, you know you 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 can do whatever you want with this red channel and assign it to a different one so and then we can uh flip it also that's the next option our value is source or inverted so if we invert we see what happens here so if we look at the green we see that it's inverted. All right, let's put it back to source. All right. And then the blue channel is reassigned to the red channel. So we kind of have two red channels in this um, texture manipulation. So if we set the blue to blue, and instead of the noise, we use our original beach texture, then our texture looks exactly the same because we're not actually doing anything special. We're assigning the red to red, green to green, blue to blue. 
And I believe you might be able to look this up. Uh, I think it's kind of a common thing. And, and that's actually a like, transition into what I want to show you with what we can use this awesome operator to do for our normal maps. Um, I think it's called swizzling, right? When you, when you reassign a channel to something else. Um, also, um, I think you'll commonly find it on, on the web. People want to flip the Y channel of a normal, right? So that's the green up and down direction, the Y direction. They need to flip it. Um, why do they need to do that? Well, because in some cases, when you're working with 3D models, um, depending on the engine or um, maybe the software package you, you use to bake out the normals from your high uh, poly um, source material, they will use the green channel inverted or not inverted. Um, depends on how you look at it. But uh, once you know the standards that you need to work with, so for example, um, by the way, I'm getting this stuff from oh, this uh, vase, this brass model, and also the background. I'm getting this from this amazing website called Polyhaven. I love it so much. It's really high quality stuff that you can use to learn and uh, uh, get into some like Zen moments because the the <laughs> the the stuff is so high quality, and you can really like learn um, things like this, where like are my normals the right way up? Um, how is my HDR lighting my scene? Anyway, all right. So, what was I talking about? I was talking about the that there are some cases where um, the normal map won't be the right way around. And when I'm downloading this stuff from Polyhaven, it usually comes with a GL uh, normal GL um, texture. So they they do use the naming conventions for whatever you need. Um, a GL, and then the other one is DirectX, uh, and you'll find that for some of their um, textures, um, it will be like included in the zip file. You you know, maybe I I don't know, maybe Unity or Unreal use DirectX. I'm not sure. I might be wrong. Correct me, please. Um, so it comes with both, both. And um, right now I have everything set up the correct way. Right, I have uh, my also, my ARM viz texture. I have my ARM map um, assigned, and that's the combination of um, the AO, R, and M map to control the um, ambient occlusion, reflectiveness, and uh, metalness of my object. That also comes from Polyhaven, usually um, already co as a combined texture, which is really handy, right? But a lot of times when I'm doing stuff in, well, with uh, models from Sketchfab or maybe I'm baking things out, I am not getting this combined ARM map. I have stuff separately. So I prepared some things where we're finally going to get into... Hold on, you're not seeing this viz texture. Never mind. Okay, so <laughs> I did it again. All right, so... Um, I'm going to simulate what happens, right? Let's say you are working with a 3D artist and, and you say, can I have the AO and the ref reflectivity map and the metalness map? And they say, okay, here are all the maps separately. And you're like, great, but that's kind of annoying. I need to combine those into uh, something that our uh, PBR material um, likes to use. And you, know, this, you can use this for other engines, for example. It doesn't have to be just for cables. I think it's a super handy thing. You can like build a tool to help you with this stuff. So um, let's delete this uh, RGB AORM texture. And let's delete this. No, let's leave this for now. So our, let's pretend our normal map is correct. So what we get sent is, for example, our AO map our metalness map, and our roughness map, right? Bunch of different textures. Cool. How do we plug this into our single port AORM texture input? Well, that's where finally combined textures comes into play. So combined textures, um, and the, you know, the, I wanna cover this in another video. I'm kinda all over the place, but um, yeah, I'll get into it. So 
we plug in the red channel is our ambient occlusion map, right? So if we put down a vis texture, we have this map that our supposed artist sent to us. And then I have this vis texture on the bottom to see what um, is happening here. And then we have a metal nest map that goes into the blue. And it's a very shiny object, so there, there isn't much happening. It's pretty much a white texture, right? So if we put in here, yeah. In the, in the case of this vase, it's just uh, super shiny. And then the green, and now we have combined our black and white maps into one single texture that I think a lot of software is starting to use for all of their um, metalness and combined stuff uh, maps instead of having like a bunch of different textures. You just have one and then you use the different channels for whatever. Okay, so uh, now a uh, tiny tangent is what I want to cover in an upcoming video as well. Like, look, I have a bunch of maps and I need this one texture and I'm using combined textures to generate this stuff. I wouldn't do this like in a project, right? So if you're working for a client and you are doing something that's like a helping or kind of like a, a, like a task, like a chore you have to do in your project is, ah, I need to combine all those textures into a single texture and then my PBR can neatly use this uh, combined texture map for what I need. Just download this texture, right? Download texture. Save it out. Like, don't, don't do this um, in your project all the time. You, you got it done. Um, combine it, save it, import it, remove those other textures so we don't need them anymore, and uh, go back to like very optimal um, amount of operations for your project. Anyway, that's, I don't know, is that a preview for the next tutorial or something? Maybe. Okay, so we have this combined texture, and then let's now simulate this incorrect normal for our engine issue, right? So I have this uh, direct X normal, and it goes into here, and I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this, and something feels off about it. It's sometimes hard to catch, and maybe this, I'm sorry if this isn't the greatest example, but uh, it it is very like evident in some models where your normals are incorrect. They're, they're, the light is shining from above, but then it seems like, is this divot in the vase coming out or in? No, let's, let's quickly compare this and then I'll just get into the man manipulation. So let's maybe zoom in a bit more. Hopefully it's not totally gross looking. So we plug in this one and yeah, not the greatest example, but it looks more correct than the DX one because it is, because we're using cables.gl or WebGL for our engine and uh, they need the green channel for the normals in a specific direction that is the opposite of what the DirectX um, normals have. So this is what we want, right? But let's pretend we only have this DirectX normal. So what do we do? We get our combined textures operator, plug in our normal map to all of the needed ports. So the red, green, and blue is coming out of the same texture. And if we look at our vis texture, it should still look like our normal map, right? So if I do like this, and then maybe make it a bit bigger. We got these two identical textures. Now to fix our normal map, and I can actually plug it into this vase already. To, to fix this green channel, we need to flip it. So all we need to do is click invert. And see, you see that now the this is the standard that we need for our 
OpenGL, oh, sorry, WebGL engine on cables. So that's a use case I really wanted to show you. <laughs> so uh, definitely flip your normals. Um, make sure you check out combined textures. I think it's super useful. And yeah, um, once you do it, save out a texture and reuse it in your project. Um, maybe you don't have to constantly do a combined texture operation. But anyway, um, hope you like this. Join us on our Discord. Come by. Um, we got some awesome stuff planned. And yeah, see you on Wednesdays. Bye.